Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to use Bernat Blanket Stripes to make a really cute baby blanket. And if you flip it over it looks just like the Karen Cakes where we do a color transition for this particular yarn. This is a genie pattern and today I'm going to show you how to use our pattern and you only need two of these balls in order to make a baby blanket. You'll need an L size 8 millimeter crochet hook in order to play today. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So here's Jeannie's pattern. It's a rectangular motion like so and we just continually go around in a circle. Of course we slip stitch in order to build up and then what happens here is that the color transitions on its own so there's no doctoring of any colors exactly how you see it how it comes out of the ball. So this is uh, just a small baby's blanket and you're gonna leave enough yarn in order to do the final round all the way around with reverse single crochet which I'll show you how to do as well. So it's a very simplistic idea. We're gonna get started right in the middle and then I'm gonna show you how to build up onto it. I'm gonna show you how to do the reverse single crochet and you'll probably have this done as quickly as Jeannie did. It took her only three hours to make this blanket. So let's get started. We're gonna create a slip knot like so and Jeannie's blanket just so the record is it's 29 inches by 34. It's perfect size for a baby blanket and only using two balls. So once you have your slip knot on there I need you to chain only 16. Remember that the one on the hook never counts as one. So one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to 16 for me. It may be back here in just a moment. So now that I have my 16 on what I want to do is that I want to come across this chain back down and come back through the other side and meet me back here. So I'm gonna create a, a rotation in this one here. So second chain from the hook so just count back. So one and two just like there and I want you to uh, insert your hook into the second chain and we're gonna do a single crochet and then we're gonna do a chain two and into the same stitch again single crochet and then chain two and then single crochet into the same chain. So what we've done is that we've created the rotation going around. So just imagine that this is gonna come around and it's gonna come out here and the chain twos are the corners just like you see. So now that you have this done all we're just gonna do now is just work our way across this chain in order to do it. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain one skip one chain. So to skip one go to the second and single crochet. Then chain one, skip one and single crochet into the next chain and I want you to do that all the way across your chain. So do that and I'll see you at the other side of this chain in just a moment. So I've now come across my chain and I have two stitches left. So I'm gonna chain one and then I'm gonna go into the very last stitch and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go into this one and then continue to go into it again and again until we are come around the other side of this particular chain. So let's just go into the very final one and we're gonna single crochet and then chain two. There's your first corner. Single crochet into the same one again and then chain two and see how I'm naturally turning the project around. Come back into the same project or same stitch and just single crochet once again. Just like that. So now what you wanna do is you wanna match exactly what you see. So you can see that these single crochets are in a certain chain and you're gonna match those all the way across. So ch chain one first and you can see you're gonna skip one and the next one is in the other side of the single crochet. So chain one single crochet in the next one. So chain one, single crochet in the next one, chain one and you're gonna do that all the way back until you get to where you had started. Okay so here's the last one here and I can tell it's the last one because the next one is the turning corner. So to, to finish this off you're gonna chain one and just extend over in slip stitch to the first single crochet. So therefore you can kind of see your rectangle is right here. So let's begin round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're going to slip stitch into the next chain two space. So you're already in the first single crochet from the row below. So slip stitch in and pull through and through. And now you're in the ch first chain two space that's part of the corner. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to chain one and I want you to single crochet, chain two, single crochet right into that same space. So you're gonna create the corner again. So single crochet, chain two and single crochet. 
So now we have to make our way to the next corner. So in order to get there first we have to chain one and then the corner happens to be the next one which will be the same information. So it's gonna be single crochet, chain two and single crochet. And see how I naturally just turn the project as I went around. So now you're gonna chain one and now you're going to skip into to the next chain one space. And then chain one and then single crochet into the next chain one space. And you keep doing that all the way around. So the only time you really have to pay attention to is the corners in order to keep those corners building out. And this is why it only took Jeannie three hours to do because it's really just all about spaces, right? So you're gonna come into the next one and then the corner is your next one after that. So chain one and here is your first corner right here. So you're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then that's your corner done and then chain one and you're gonna jump to the next corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then keep moving around to the other side. So chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space and so on. So what you're doing is that you're just paying attention to where you're finishing off. So here's the last space here and then chain one and join it to the first single crochet that you had started with. Just like that. So here's the trick. Every time you go to start this you're always gonna slip stitch to the first chain two space and then start. So your slip stitching will always stay in this particular corner as you go. So let's just review one more time for round number three and then we're gonna let you go and then I'll show you how to do the edging as well. So as promised when you go to start a new round you just slip stitch to the first chain two space and then keep that corner. So chain one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same space. So you're just gonna be paying attention to your spaces here. So chain one, go to the next space and then chain one and then corner happens to be next. So every side gets bigger as you go. So this distance between the corners gets greater and greater. So in the corners is single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then you keep on going. So chain one, go to the next, just open it up if you don't see it, just use your fingers and keep on going around. And eventually the yarn will change color on its own and I think in today's tutorial it's not gonna change color because I'm not gonna do enough of it to get that color transition to happen but it's really a neat idea and um, saves the hassle of trying to figure out what colors are gonna go together and you'll work out something really quite pretty. So chain one, the next one is your chain two space, the next corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then chain one, go into your next space, chain one and then here's your next corner. So it's single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain one after that and keep moving down like so. So you can see that this size hook, this size yarn, you are gonna have a baby's project in no time. So if somebody surprises you with the baby shower then you don't have to worry about it so much. So you're just gonna do the same rotation all the way around and then once you have almost all of the two balls done you just leave, leave enough yarn and then you'll do a reverse single crochet. So this is the last one before it starts again. So chain up one and then just join to the first single crochet that you had started with to bring that to conclusion. So that's how you're gonna do this and what I'm gonna show you is how to do the reverse single crochet all the way back around in order to finish. So here is going to be the final border. So once you get to the size that you need then we're just gonna finish it off with the reverse single crochet which is also known as the crab stitch. So to begin you're going to chain up one and you're gonna come to the space before it. So look where the hand is and come before it and go right into the space and dive in and then you're gonna wrap the hook, pull it through and then you're gonna pull through two. So it's called reverse single crochet because instead of moving forward I'm moving backward. So once you have that reverse single crochet done then all you just have to do is chain one and then go to the next chain one space right here. Okay that is before it and go in, pull through and pull through the two. Then chain one, go to the space before it again and what this is doing is it's providing a nice border. 
So just make sure you chain one in between doing the reverse single crochet. And in the corners, what do you think is gonna happen? So in the corners what uh, Jeannie is suggesting and I'm gonna get there in a second is just to put in two reverse single crochets into the corner just to fill it in. So the reverse single crochet I didn't learn too long ago. I never even knew it existed to be honest with you. So here is the corner. So Jeannie's just suggesting that you put two into the final corner and you can do that. So go in and then put another one in and then keep moving along. So chain one, go to the next space and etc. So you're just gonna keep moving around doing this and you're gonna notice that it'll have a nice finishing border just like you see here and then you'll be good to go. So until next time, uh, I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com. When you get around, just slip stitch it, just weave in your tails and you're good to go. Till next time, have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.